stupid head. <laughs> Dun 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 dun. So I got this far cutting the pocket for the inlay before my last tiny end mill broke. Um, so until I get some more, I'm going to have to put this on hold and then uh, do some other more productive stuff. Well hello again. So while I was out getting new tools, Eric sanded the handles and did all of his finishing work on them. You can see beautiful finish work from the disc sander. So now I got new end mills from my local tool supplier and I'm going to go uh, recut this whole thing. It's going to take about 35 minutes. Um, I lowered the step over. You can see the tool path that spirals around. And then each time it steps over, it was stepping over 12 thousandths of an inch. I lowered that to 7 just for safety's sake. And the new tool that I'm using is a little bit longer, so it's more uh, wobbly, more deflection. So I lowered the step over to 7 thousandths, which is why it's going to take 35 minutes to cut this little thing. Um, I could go in with a bigger end mill and hog it all out, and then peck away at the corners with the little end mill, which is probably the way to do it, but whatever. One piece of code, one tool, it's all the same perfect depth and all that stuff. So I'll just do that. So I ended up um, utterly destroying this handle accidentally due to a stupid mistake on my part. Um, yeah, so that's garbage. So I made another one, just a replacement, and now I'm going in and I'm going to use uh, three tools to, to hog it out instead of just one. So you can see right here I'm using a 1 8 inch end mill. And this is going to take 99% of the metal out, maybe 95% out. And then I'm going to go in with a 1 16 tool and uh, clean it up a little bit, clean up the corners, and then I'm going to go in with a super fine, tiny 1 32nd end mill. And that'll work great. Because I just kept breaking those tiny ones. I mean, they're way too small. Anyway, looks like it's going good. Starting to look like a head. Done. Sweet. And that took all of two minutes. It's taken like 30 with the other tool. Now I'm just gonna indicate this guy so that these white lines match up. Helps it spin perfectly concentrically. And then hit go again. Recutting this whole pattern again, uh, one thou deeper. So this is what it looks like after the one sixteenth tool got up in there and cleaned it up. Uh, it's looking just about done. And then my little tiny tool is just gonna—it's not gonna touch um, the flats. It's just gonna go around the outside and do a couple passes around there to clean up and make the little corners a little bit deeper and smaller. And then hopefully my Viking head's gonna drop right in there. Um, for all you nerds out there, theoretically I gave it one thousandth wall clearance. So the pocket is one thousandth bigger on each wall, two thousandth overall, than my inlay. Um, so I'll start with that and we'll see how much that fits. I'm hoping for just a light slip fit in there. Maybe even a light press fit. So it would appear that that boy fits perfectly. It, I didn't get it in all the way yet. Um, the fit is good. It's a, 
it's a, a snug like a press fit. I can do it with my fingers, of course. Um, this side's in all the way almost. Um, I just didn't want to get it in all the way yet because I'm not ready to. However, I think that one thou of clearance on the whole perimeter uh, works for this material. Like the my card on the outside, it's let's call it a bit squishy and and spongy compared to like a rock solid material. Like if I was doing a titanium inlay or something like that, or a copper or something like that, that uh, isn't as forgiving. I might want to give it two thou of clearance on the wall, and that should be a nice little drop in fit. Um, but yeah, let's see if I can get this guy out. Yep, there we go. Not a big deal. So there's the pocket. Let's get nice and close here. So you can actually three, see three different tool paths. A little bit of leftover from the eighth inch up in the corner, and then the sixteenth inch in the center here, and then if you look around the whole perimeter, you can see the one thirty second tool just kind of dragging its way around. And it worked really good. I got nice, nice tight corners, tight dome at the top there. So when you go to put it in, you know, if I angle it and put the top side in, very crisp fit. And then if I angle it the other way and put the bottom side in, a very tight fit. Now the inlay is thicker than the pocket in the handle. That's why it's not going in all the way. Like here. That's so that when it is glued in, we can sand it or tumble it or whatever we want to do. Um, so sand it so that it's perfectly flush. Totally perfectly flush. But yeah, it looks like there shouldn't be any gaps between the, the metal and the inlay, which is going to be awesome. So, it's been a giant headache to do this, but three tools is absolutely the way to go. I could probably have done it with two, but this took 10 minutes to machine, and that's being conservative. Whereas using the one little 132nd tool took, what, like 35 minutes, and I broke four of them? Yeah, that's no fun. That's no fun at all. The tricky part with using three separate tools, and you're all going down to the same depth, is that sometimes the tools aren't exactly the right length. I mean, I zeroed all mine. To within one tenth of each other in length offset, but I don't know if you can see it on camera here. But there's a tiny bit of a step right in front of my fingernail where this tight step circles goes to the bigger ones. And then the corner where the 132nd tool dragged around, there's a tiny little step too. Not a big deal, just gives more room for glue to hide in there, which is good, but. I think that was my initial hesitation with using three tools in the first place, is that I can't get them all perfectly to the right level. So, anyway, this is going to work awesome. Super duper duper awesome. Well, this guy right here is all done. Turned out perfectly well. The inlay is nice and flush, nice and tight, nice and beautiful. My only little gripe is that you can see this shadow, the darker part of the micarta right on the corner there. Micarta just tends to do that sometimes, because it's made in layers of fabric and then glue and fabric and glue and, I don't know, this whole sheet of micarta I've been using for a while, it tends to have these pockets of glue. It's kind of annoying, but we'll just call it a shadow or maybe a blood stain or something like that. It's not ideal, and next time maybe I would use G10 or something a bit more consistent or something, but it looks really cool. Love how tight I got the inlay. So after Eric glued them in, um, he sanded it all flush, and then threw it in the tumbler, and just love it. Flips like a dream. I'm not used to flipping the lefty. Yep. Love it. Going to the new owner today. Finally glad to be done with this inlay project, but I'm super happy that I learned all the skills that I learned um, while making it, because, you know, it'd be fun to do more projects like this in the future, but preferably on my own time, not for a specific customer or something like that. Anyway, that's how I do an inlay. Crazy. 
crazy inlay. Um, all right, there you go. Thanks for watching. Bye.